Now behind me here is a boat that we've been waiting a long time to see because this is the new Sunseeker 90 Ocean. Now this is an entirely new range for the British based yard. It's a completely different concept, much more focused on time on board, on space, rather than the usual focus purely on performance and handling and luxury. So the starting point is a very different hull design and you can see straight away from the shape of that bow it's much fuller and more upright which creates more volume on board. The whole boat is in fact much beamier than normal for a 90 foot boat of this size. Uh, it's over 23 feet wide and that creates a lot more internal volume. But just look at all these hull windows too. There is a massive amount of glass in the hull which again enhances the feeling of light and space and makes the most of all that extra volume. But this is another very interesting new idea. So these bulwarks here, you can see there's a massive glass insert in the actual bulwark. So rather than having a big GRP bulwark here, you've got glass that you can see right through so that when you're inside, you can see through out to the water rather than just being faced with a big blank sheet of fiberglass. So let's carry on back and see if we can take a closer look. A couple of details, first of all, this new boat, the starting price is 6.1 million British pounds before tax, but realistically, once you've specced it up and paid your taxes, it's gonna be more like seven or eight, or in this case, I think even nine million pounds once you've fully kitted it up. But you do get an awful lot of boat for your money. So let's start having a closer look on board. So you can see straight away from this aft platform that this is a very different look and style of Sunseeker. So for starters, it's much, much bigger than a conventional bathing platform. Normally a bathing platform is really just somewhere to store the tender and launch it. This is a complete entertainment zone. Now you can see we've got a couple of sea bobs here and they are, there is a dedicated locker for those to store in with an actual built-in charging point. But as well as being much wider and longer, you can see it's fully kitted out to be a socializing space. You've got these huge extend seats here that come down. That is a folding transom, so when you're underway, it's just a nice plain white transom. When you get to your anchorage zone, the seats fold down, drop down, and face aft into this area. You've got more freestanding seats over here. And crucially, there's actually a barbecue here. So that whole thing folds down, but when you lift it up and then open these hatches, you can see it is a complete grill and barbecue section. So the captain has kindly agreed to show us how these new extend seats work. And oh, here we go. So now you can see the transom folding up. Closes up very neatly. So that's in transom mode. And then that whole section swings up on the upper hinges. And this reveals the garage area. It's not quite a full garage. There isn't space for a, a, a tender under there. That sits on the end of the bathing platform. But it is a really big storage area underneath. You can see there are some big just see if I can quickly sneak under there. You can see there are some really big storage lockers in there. It's full of cushions at the moment, but there's really deep storage under there. And then, as we can see, the top of this is now swinging open. And this, in its raised position, creates the sunbeds facing into the cockpit. And you can see this whole cockpit has been arranged to face aft. Conventionally on a boat like this, the cockpit faces into the boat, but really you're just staring at a glass wall or into the saloon. But the beauty of this is you're staring out to sea. And then the final part of the transformation is these glass gates swinging open. They lock into place. The cushions go back on. hey presto as if by magic 
you've got a complete new socializing space with the extend seating facing into the boat and it all links up to create a lovely entertainment space at cockpit level it really is a bit of a stroke of genius this single garage door which normally gets used for nothing other than closing up the space has now become some pads that face off at deck level as well as some pads that rise up and face in to the cockpit it's a completely transformative stroke of genius and I have to say it's a real showpiece too it's rather fun to actually show your guests how it all works there is of course some extra storage up here there's lots of glasses it's all part of the cockpit area and over on this side we've got a little mini wet bar and a fridge so wherever you are on the boat there is always access to a fridge drinks everything you need so let's have a quick look along the side decks here you can see there are gates leading out so you can board from the side too and we'll just take a walk along the side deck and that's what I mean by these glass infills in the bulwarks you get a fantastic amount of light coming in through there and the other nice feature is these inboard grab rails so rather than being up here where they spoil the boat's lines a bit you've got them inset so you've still got something to hang on to but they're very discreetly tucked away inside then you come up to the foredeck area and again look how big this space is that beam is carried a long long way forward so rather than just a single central sun pad or a small bench you've got a really great space up here so you can see there's a big central three person sunbed here but as well as the sunbed you've got these lovely little tables outboard of it so on either side of it there is another little mini seating area nice teak table pop-up lights it's all very cool and then a big bench here with another drinks table there and one of the real pleasures of this area is you can erect a cinema screen so the cinema screen sits across the bow there and then effectively you've got a projector here and you have an outdoor cinema so this whole space here becomes a wonderful outdoor cinema and let's carry on round all well, the crew's busy cleaning we'll go back in this direction you can see some of the lighting all the way along the side decks here big storage locker and then up to the flybridge and once again it's an amazing amount of space all that extra beam it just means that you've got more space more volume the full length of the boat now this is one of my favorite parts of it this is the aft seating area you can see it's got freestanding furniture got some very nice armchairs at the back but particularly this glass transom again it means you've got a fantastic view out even when you're up here riding along there's nothing to block the view you've got a beautiful glass screen and stainless steel rails and it's so wide that you can get these three big sofas all spaced out and yet room to walk behind them but I can see that being a wonderful spot to spend the time on board and then moving forward massive dining table and again rather than normally you get fixed furniture in here you've got a sort of C shape of seating but here it's completely freestanding and there is space to move all the way around it so there's no shuffling along a bench to get to your spot so they've only got three chairs either side but there's space for at least four on either side and probably two at the end so again it's just that extra luxury that that space brings you now of course you're going to expect a wet bar and boy have you got some there is one unit over here with a big ice box very nice marble finish and beautifully painted top and lots of glasses and storage underneath but you've also that isn't even the main one this is the main bar and again as well as the size look at the detailing here really nicely done we've got inset stainless steel strips little fabric panels 
recessed lighting just adds an extra layer of detail and finish. Big marble top, another sink there, and this is where there really is masses of storage space. Close that one up. You can see there's two big chiller drawers there, more storage in there. Yet more, there's a big ice maker there. And then under this side, yet another grill. So as well as the barbecue down on the stern platform, there's another barbecue up here. So wherever you are, you can have proper party mode. Now there is an outside helm station here. You can see two swivel bucket seats, little bolsters, throttles here, got bow and stern thrusters, autopilot, very comprehensively kitted out. And then this little section here, I really like this too, because it's lovely underway when, particularly if you are an owner operator, or even if you've got your captain on board, it's very nice to be able to sit alongside in a nice sociable unit here. You can see that these panels pull out and that can be made up into one big sun pad, but also what a lovely spot to sit and have your coffee have they got it laid out here. Huge hard top with a massive opening fabric section. You can see just how wide and how long that is. That When that opens up, you've got an enormous opening and it just allows you to be really flexible with this. You can have shade, you can have sun, you really can make the most of it in all weathers. And lots of nice deta detailing overhead. Fabric panels, little pin spot lighting, as well as the spotlights. And lovely detail up here with these big sweeping arches. You can see the sort of contrasting colors. You've got the white GRP, as well as the sort of gloss back finish. Fabric panels and then huge speakers built into it. Lovely level of finish. Right, let's go and take a look inside. Here we go. So look at this, this is the main saloon and yet again, it's, it's that width. Normally on a 90 foot boat like this, you have a long, thin saloon area and everything sort of pushed out to the sides to try and make it feel spacious. This, there is no need to make it feel spacious. It's so wide, it instantly feels, well, really more like a kind of beachside apartment than a conventional long thin ship and it means you can have a very different layout again you've got freestanding furniture that you can actually move around on both sides have a huge spread of comfortable sofa seating big dining table over on the other side and these floor to ceiling windows now you can really see the effect of having that glass section in the boardwalk you can see straight out through there you can open up this whole side window really opens the whole thing up. There's obviously going to be a lot of light coming in here when you're out in, on the sea rather than tucked into a marina here, but absolutely transformative. Obviously a massive widescreen TV. And then moving forward, in this particular layout, they've kept it all open plan, including the galley. You can choose to have that sectioned off if you want to keep that more as a crew area or somewhere a little bit more private or separate but here they've gone very much for that modern open plan living effect and it really works it means you can all hang out on this main deck and be part of the action very high spec galley there's a wine cooler built into the end here lovely marble finish to the work surfaces proper induction hob oven dishwasher, sink, and a side door out. So again, when this is a crew operated boat, it means they can come and go without necessarily having to come through the saloon. Now moving forward, there's a discreet day head located up here on this bridge area. Just means you don't have to constantly go down to your cabin. Very handy during the daytime. And then the bridge deck itself, Again, this has been left open. It can be closed off if you want more privacy. But actually, it's a really nice area. There's a little spot where you can sit, do your navigation, chat to the captain. 
And another nice feature are these overhead deck lights. So you can see they've got blinds half drawn back, but it just means there's a lot of natural light in here. Normally, a bridge can be quite a dark, forbidding, business-like place. But here, with that sunlight coming in from overhead, the big screens, and that's the other side door here. So again, there is separate access onto the side decks through that door. And then the helm station itself, two huge captain's chairs, all electrically adjustable for height and reach and backrest, folding arms, and then the bridge itself. Absolutely state-of-the-art, three big touchscreen MFDs controlling all the ship systems. At the moment, we've got it set up as cameras, keeping an eye on everything. You can see the engine room, the bathing platform. Obviously, you can have one as a navigation screen. You can have others operating the ship systems, the state of all the tankage, how much fuel there is, pumps, systems, all accessible from there. The main ship's controls, got the throttles, the thrusters, the autopilot and that looks like to be a FLIR camera system. So that's the infrared cameras, again, helping you to navigate even at night. And then let's drop down from here forward. Now this takes down to the forward VIP cabin. So this isn't the master cabin on this boat, it is a forward VIP, but the big change again is that beam. So we are now well forward in the boat, but because of that vertical bow and that very full beam that's carried a long way forward, this is a really generously sized VIP. You can see just how much space there is all around the bed. And over on this side, there is room for a separate little desk area, vanity unit. There's a big hanging wardrobe on that side. And then round to the ensuite. Very high end fit and finish here. Beautiful vein marble, sliding mirror that can move across. You've got a little opening port there so you can get some fresh air in here. And of course a big walk-in shower. But this is only the start of the accommodation system. If we head back, we can now come down to the main staircase that leads down to the, the primary accommodation sector of the boat. And this drops down. And first of all, let's go into a couple of the guest suites. So this is the double guest suite. Midships, this is facing a thwart ships as well. But again, you can see the size of the window in there. Those big hull windows really come into their own lots of natural light and a great view. Obviously another big ensuite bathroom, same finish as that forward VIP. And to be honest, there's almost as much space in here as there is in the VIP. You're really not a second class citizen in here. Big hanging wardrobe. Look at the level of finish. Well, it could have such a plain door, but no, they've got lots of detailing, lots of different textures, lovely handles looks like a doorway rather than the, a locker front. Big TV, again, lots of textures, all adding to the level of interest and detail. Fabric wall covering, even this has a lovely sort of textured 3D finish. And even the corridor, you can see, got this inset kind of brassy copper effect and lots of textured, very grainy enhanced wood. There is a twin cabin next door. Again, look at the space between those two beds. Absolutely buckets of floor space. Two decent sized single beds, another big hull window. Very smart strip lighting overhead, recess behind there. It's a really well lit boat. There's none of this direct lighting. It's all much more subtle, much more mood lighting effect. Again, Lovely detail on the door handles. Of course, same ensuite bathroom and another big hanging wardrobe, full length mirror. But we've saved the best for last. Before we go in there, let's just have a look in there. Oh, we've got a lot of the entertainment systems on board. That's the satellite domes. And lots of storage for towels. But now 
we go into the master, the owner's cabin, and look at the size of this. Absolutely mammoth bed. That's got to be more than six feet across that bed. That's as wide as it is long. And a huge amount of space all around it. Again, look at that floor space. And a proper full-size sofa. You often get a kind of slightly compromised chaise long in here, but no, not here. That's a proper freestanding sofa. Huge hull windows, really long, big opening port section. Vast mirror TV. So it's a mirror during the daytime, but when you switch on, that becomes a TV. Big soundbar underneath it. Lovely vanity unit slash desk over on this side. Little fiddles, beautifully detailed, suede lined, all your valuables. Even the bedside units, beautifully finished. Kind of leather wrap, lots of detail and curves. Again, a little tray to put your jewellery. Beautifully done. And there's curves everywhere. You know, that so easily could be a flat panel, but there's a lovely little curve shape to that. Lots and lots of detail. And then into the bathroom. And masses of space in here. Look at the size of that walk-in shower. Huge sort of overhead rain shower effect, complete marble lined, little shelf to put your toiletries, another pull out shower, but really it's the space, his and hers sinks, mirrors everywhere, bouncing the light around, lovely blind, to keep things private or keep the light out at night, absolutely fabulous. And on this side, a full walk-in wardrobe area. Full hanging height, lots of fiddle shelves, safe for your valuables. And again, another one there, all beautifully lit inside, little drawers down below. And even this mirror, it looks like it's just a mirror, but if you can see, there's a little recess for your fingers, you open that up. And how nicely done is that? It's a, not a big space at all, but the fact that they've bothered to create something rather special out of it with little trays for, I don't know, your socks or your watches or ties. Rather lovely. Beautiful. Right. Okay. Thank you. Let's pop back up and see if we can take a look at the engine room. Okay, so this is the access to the crew space in the engine room. It's another discreet flush fitting door that pops open. Hello, Captain. Yep. May we have a little look down at the yeah, engine sure, room? Yeah. Fantastic. The crew area. Superb. Are, you, are we okay to have a little look at the crew area? <coughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. You're very kind. So, this is a crew mess. All very clean, very white. Nice little galley area with a fridge. Got one bunk cabin in there. A second bunk cabin. Washer dryer. And a separate bathroom. So functional, clean, decent amount of space. And really nice to have a bit of a socialising area. So it's not just a cabin that you're stuck in the whole time. There is proper space to actually take a bit of a break down here. And then full watertight access to the engine room. Now, let's have a bit of a crawl in here. So, there's a lot going on in here. It's fairly busy, but we've got twin man 1800 horsepower engines. And they are connected to shaft. I'm not sure I can get round the back there at the moment. But I've had a chat with the captain and he tells me that this is claimed to have a top speed of about 26 knots, but in reality, they've had up to 29 and a half knots when they're running at full chat with these two engines. But it's really not so much about performance. This is more about comfortable cruising. And at 18 knots, he reckons there's a range of about 600 miles. 
but drop it down to eight knots and that increases hugely. I'll check on the figures in a minute, but it's very much about comfortable cruising at slower speeds rather than running everywhere flat out. But look at all the systems in here. There are two huge cooler generators. Quite difficult to get in here and have a look. See if we can creep around the back. There's not a lot of clearance over those engines. It's going to be a busy space down here. But you can just see the rudder controls, the steering controls at the back. Some raw water strainers there. You can see, oh, I've snagged on something. We've got side power controls. These are, I think these are probably the thrusters. Yep, we've got the bow thruster, huge hydraulic thrusters. All the electronics on this side. Very neat, but pretty busy down here. That looks to be another generator. Let's see if we can crawl around here. Battery boxes down there, just see. And then huge raw water strainers, just see at the back of the engines, those big glass lids, that's where the cooling water comes in and it runs around the engines to keep them cool. And massive exhaust, you can see it all pumping out here. Right, let's pop back up. There we go. So that is the full tour of Sunseeker's new 90 Ocean. Very different, very interesting yacht. I hope you enjoyed a brief look round. Thank you very much for watching do clock back in again and we'll try and bring you more tours of the very latest launches as and when they happen. Thanks for watching.